Hello everyone, welcome back to Reddit now. I'm your host Peter, and today we're going to be looking at r slash malicious compliance. Now this is one of the most satisfying subreddits, and probably one of my favorites. So I really hope you enjoy the video, let's get into it. This first post is titled, What do you mean I can't drive my car? I've been a mechanic my entire working life so far, and this is one of my favorite experiences. I had a customer come in complaining about a vibration. I put the vehicle on the lift and checked the front end. I found a nearly broken tie rod and a faulty rack and pinion. So basically, the passenger side front wheel was not fully secured to the steering system and would soon break and cause the wheel to completely disconnect from the steering system. I told the customer how much the repair would be and told her it was unsafe to drive. She asked me to put it back together so she could leave. I told her that I could not do that because if it broke after I let her leave, I could be held liable. She started yelling and screaming about calling the cops and suing me and how her cousin's brother knows a guy who's related to the chief of police and I'll be arrested. So she calls the police and they come out. I show the officers the vehicle and they understood the safety concern. They told me just to put the car down and let her leave. I did and even made her sign a statement declining crucial safety repairs. She left with the most ha ha I told you so smug grin on her face until she left the property, got pulled over and her car impounded. They also gave her a ticket for reckless driving. I was so happy seeing her car get towed. Was it the same cops that told you to release the car waiting just off the property to impound the car? Or was it more a coincidence? Same cops, they pulled out of my parking lot right behind her. Now, if you thought that was bittersweet, wait until you hear the next story. Next up, a post by Earthshaker. I demand to be put in a seat that is able to recline. A few years ago, I was on a flight from LA to Singapore. Takes 16 plus hours. I'm a tall dude around 6 foot 3, which is approximately 190 centimeters. So I don't fit very well in economy class seats. On most planes, my knees are often very close or right up against the seat in front of me. This makes it impossible for the person in front of me to recline their seat, which usually isn't a problem once the person in front of me sees how crammed I am in those tiny seats. Now I'm 6 foot 6 myself, so I can confirm this statement is 100% credible. However, for this particular flight, the man in front of me was not having it. He tried to recline his seat, but couldn't because my legs were there. He turns around and sees what's happening and asks me something along the lines of, do you mind letting me put my seat back? I respond with, I wish I could, but I physically can't. I'll do my best to give you as much space as I can, but that won't be much. At this point, he starts to get angry and just starts pushing as hard as he can back into his seat. Needless to say, this was not particularly pleasant for me. I ask him to please stop. He says, I'll stop when I can put my seat back. I decide I'll just wait him out. He'll eventually get tired. After about 10 to 15 minutes of this, he calls a flight attendant over and proceeds to demand a new seat. The flight attendant tells him there are no available seats and he will have to deal with it. He demands to speak to the pilot. So the flight attendant goes up front to talk to the cockpit. Keep in mind that throughout this, he is still pressing with all his bite against my knees, with only short breaks to yell at the flight attendant. After a couple of minutes, the co-pilot, he wanted to speak to the pilot and wasn't happy about this, comes back and tries to explain to the man that he can't change seats because there are no other coach seats free. The man continues to demand a seat that is able to recline. Give me an upgrade, this is unacceptable, making a scene, etc. The co-pilot finally gives in and says while looking at the man, Sir, would you like to sit up in business class? The man stands up and mutters something along the lines of ducking finally, to which the co-pilot responds, Sir, sit down, I wasn't talking to you. He turns to me and repeats, How would you like a seat in business class? I have, to this day, never seen someone as furious as the man as I walked past him to my new business class seats with free drinks. The pilot made the right call. I hope to hell that he had a hit-eating grin while saying it and while you two giggled all the way to business class. The co-pilot kept his cool pretty well. I definitely had a hit-eating grin, big enough for the both of us. Combined with the muffled laughter of other passengers, it turned out pretty well. The next post is by Balloon Understudy. My neighbours wanted to call a professional to mark their property line. 
My parents agreed. This was a long time ago, but I remember it clearly. We moved into a community with tight spaces in between our house and our neighbours, and we didn't like them being able to see into our kitchen. We put up a bunch of plants, costing thousands, but my parents thought it would be worth it. A week later, my parents awoke to the plants being completely chopped down. My father was furious and marched down to our neighbour's house. He told my father the plants were on his property line. Therefore, he had a total right to take them down. He warned that if anything were to go up on his property again, he would report us to the authorities immediately. Later that day, my father called the company that had put in the plants. And with the warranty, we could have them replanted next week for no charge. We made sure that there was no way it was on our neighbor's property. However, a few days later, we caught him chopping them down at 2am. We called the police upon obstruction of property, and after a chat with my neighbour, he decided to call a professional and mark his property line. My father agreed. A few days later, I got home to find orange tape in my neighbour's yard. Apparently, his fence was 11 feet over our property line. We watched as he took down his fence, completely furious. Within the next month, we were enjoying our new space and privacy in our backyard, and my neighbour ended up losing a quarter of his backyard. My neighbour ended up having to pay almost $10,000 for destruction of our property and we got to plant our plants again. Too long didn't read. My neighbour chopped down our plants because he claimed we were on his property. After calling a professional, he lost 11 feet of his backyard and had to pay for destruction of property and we got to keep our plants. Next post is by The Romper. Was told to actually read the policy, so I did. I work for an office and we have an 8 week busy season with mandatory overtime, 12 to 14 hours a day. During this time, the company agrees to reimburse us for dinner, up to $13 per meal. We just have to submit a claim with our receipts at the end of the busy season. Food options around my work aren't great, so I usually bought dinner from my home. But sometimes I was too tired to cook after a long day, so out of the 8 weeks I purchased maybe 10 meals. Three of those meals I spent $13.50, going 50 cents over the limit. This resulted in a whopping $1.50 overage, which my manager said it was no big deal and that I could include on my expense claim. He signed off on it and everything. A few days after I submitted my report, head office emailed me saying they rejected my expense claim and that I could resubmit it after I removed the $1.50 overage. I wrote back saying my manager was fine with the $1.50 overage and even signed off on it. They responded by telling me that they do not allow overages under any circumstances, that the $1.50 must be removed or that they wouldn't approve any of my meal expenses. They ended their email with the advice that I should actually read the company policy next time. Fine, they were right and I was wrong. So I decided I'd read the policy very thoroughly before redoing my expense claim. Yes, the policy clearly stated a $13 maximum on purchased meals. And oh, what's this? The policy also allows $10 per dime for meals you bring from home? I very happily removed the $1.50 overage and added an additional $300 for the 30 meals I bought from home. I should read the company policy more often. Some of you are asking if I got paid the $300 and the answer is yes. Many are suggesting the person was sincerely trying to help me out, but I'm not 100% sure because they were so snippy in their email. Also, when we were emailed the policy at the beginning of the busy season, there was no mention of the per dime and no one else in my department knew about it. Either way, I made sure to thank them just in case they were being sincere and I was just too jaded to see it. Hey guys, a huge thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you've made it this far, you obviously enjoyed the video and I think that warrants a like. If, on the other hand, you hated it and watched this far for no reason at all, then hit the dislike button. Make sure you hit one of the recommended videos on the screen. I've been your host Peter from Reddit Now and I hope I'll see you in tomorrow's episode. See ya!